How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily Note. On today's show, we're going to talk about England again. And uh, we're also going to be talking about Manchester City because they picked up more injuries. How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. That's right. So it's Wednesday morning, which means we're going to talk about England. And finally, the international break is over. But last night, we played Belgium. And again, it's um, another poor performance. A very, very, very late goal from Jude Bellingham um, saved us from defeat. Um, but overall, I did not like that performance. Now... I decided I was going to sit and watch this 95 minutes or whatever it was. And um, yeah, it's 95 minutes of my life that I will never get back. Um, opening 15, 20 minutes, England started poor, really poor. Um, and then the first goal, a mistake from Jordan Pickford, horrendous mistake. Um, and it was actually a really good finish from Tielemans and... Um, you see the way that he kind of reversed it back across, knowing that Pickford's going to be flying across his goal that way. Really intelligent finish. Um, and I don't think a lot of people will have actually realised, and it probably go underrated, but that was a really good finish. Um, and then Ivan Tony um, gets himself a penalty. And um, listen, he's one of the best penalty takers um, in the Premier League. And I think his record is 29 out of 31 taken. Um, no mistake. Um, great goal. Uh, we actually thought that we went 2-1 ahead through Jared Bowen, who I thought actually had a really good game. Um, but it was offside. Um, and then international football, the levels, you make any mistake, one moment, lapse of concentration, whatever it might be, instantly you're punished. And there's a poor you know, interchange on the edge of the box um, where our play breaks down. One diagonal long ball, which Lewis Dunk should be dealing with. He doesn't because he's crap. And Lukaku has the ball. The pass he puts in for Tielemans is insane. Um, and it's 2-1. And then the second half just kind of felt a bit flat. It was very slow, laborious and just boring. And then 95th minute, I think it was, 95 and a bit, um, Jude Bellingham scores. A uh, really good low finish into the bottom corner. Saves our blushes. Saves us from, you know, two home defeats in a row for the first time in 11 years, I think it was. And um, listen, it's just really crap. And I know that we've got injuries and this is what I'm going to speak about because of Man City and everything. But, you know, John Stones within 10 minutes breaks down um, and has to come off. I look at that and I think to myself, will he be fit for the game at the weekend against Arsenal? I'm not sure. It looks so innocuous how he did it. But that was one of those kind of, you know, moves where... It looks so innocuous, but you can kind of see his knee and his ankle buckle and where you think, oh, I'd be fine. It's those kind of ones that end up having serious repercussions um, where you don't really think anything of it. I remember when Jurian Timber done his knee and he actually carried on and was told at half time he'd be fine and it didn't look that bad and he's been out for like six, seven months. It's like... I'm not saying that his injury is at that extent, but it wouldn't surprise me because it's one of those ones that doesn't look like anything, but turns into being something, you know, really bad. But um, also speaking about Man City, um, Akanje uh, for Switzerland uh, pulled out uh, because of an injury. Now, I don't know how serious that is and precautionary, whatever it might be. I actually think he'll probably be involved at the weekend. I actually think a lot of the players that, you know, were off with Man City will probably be involved at the weekend. The one you probably got question marks over is Edison. Picked up that injury against Liverpool. Um, that's one where you're kind of like, mm, maybe. Um, Kevin De Bruyne 
I think he'll be absolutely fine for the game. Haaland, no issues. Um, and I think Kyle Walker may well be fine, but I'm not sure. It's probably Edison and question marks over Walker and Stones. Um, and listen, if those players are missing, that's a big advantage to Arsenal, massively, because they're big players to miss. Um, and I know they've got so many players to choose from and whatnot, but that's a big miss, all of those players, um, Stones in particular. Um, but yeah, um, one other side note, and I mentioned it last night, why is Gareth Southgate playing Declan Rice again for 90 minutes? Phil Foden as well. Phil Foden and Declan Rice were the two players that played 90 minutes against Brazil and then against Belgium. And I'm looking at that and I'm thinking to myself, hold on a minute. Can you not be taking them off? Why are you playing them for 90 minutes in both games? You know, you know what's coming up. You know that these players are going to be heavily involved in Premier League and Champions League and everything else. And they're going to be playing every three, four days. Why couldn't you just turn around after 60 minutes and say, right, get those off. They've done what they've had to do in the international break. Let's go. Let's try something different. Let's try something else. And, you know, it's like the situation with the goalkeepers. Why take other goalkeepers there? We know that Jordan Pickford is Gareth Southgate's number one. So why does he play both games? Why not look at one of the other goalkeepers? Because what's going to happen if Pickford picks up an injury, you know, during the tournament or something? And then you've got to look at one of these goalkeepers and go, right, go on, on you go. Um, I know I haven't played you in God knows how long, but yeah, um, yeah, let's hope for the best. Like, what are friendlies for? Friendlies are there to experiment and try things and whatnot. So why are you still playing a keeper? It don't make sense. You know, um, Cole Palmer had a brilliant season at Chelsea. He doesn't get a single minute during the games. And I'm like, what's the point in that? Honest to God, Gareth Southgate. What a bang average manager. I said it in my last video. I'll say it again. Absolutely awful. And England ain't winning nothing with this guy. That's for sure. Um, but yeah, listen. Um, a lot of talk about uh, Kobe Mainu. Obviously, wasn't even in the squad initially. And then because of injuries, got brought into the squad. Um, and the one thing I'll say is, uh, and a lot of people are too scared to say this, all right? But I think that he is... Clearly a very talented boy. 18 years old. He looks so good. And he's going to have such a great career. But again, we get caught into this thing where we start lording so much onto young shoulders so early. And it's like, let him play. You know, I saw he got man of the match. He had a good game. But was it man of the match? No, it wasn't a man of the match performance. Let's be real about it. His performance was not man of the match, you know, and it's just, yeah, let the boy play. I think he's going to have an exceptional career. And I think that if he continues the way he is, he's going to be such a good player. And I do feel that somebody like him should be on the plane um, for the tournament in the summer because I'd rather have him there than a Jordan Henderson and um, Calvin Phillips, etc. Um, somebody that's, you know, got the capabilities of coming in when needed and everything. You've got your players like Bellingham um, and Rice that are going to be, you know, the certainties for those, those areas. And then you've got another position there. And somebody like Menu is the perfect person to come there to learn and uh, and just, you know, that youth that these young players have where they play with no fear, like they're playing with their mates in the park. Um, so, yeah, listen, I've got nothing against him at all. I think he's a quality young player. Um, but I just feel that the the praise is too much. It's like overhyping already. Um, but it is what it is at the end of the day. This is this country. Um, they always latch on to a player and then just raise their profile through the roof. Same thing happened years and years and years ago with Theo Walcott, if you remember. Um, got his international debut before his actual Premier League debut, if I remember rightly. Like, come on, man. So, yeah, um, listen, it is what it is. But, listen, England get the draw. Uh, man City, they've got themselves some injury worries to contend with. Um, and now we move back to Premier League football. Thank God for that. That crap is over. Premier League football is back. 
And it is Arsenal against Man City. I cannot wait. I'm going to be doing a combined 11 for this game. That will be out either this evening or tomorrow latest. Um, there's going to be the preview to the game and everything else. I can't wait for this. Um, it's a big one and we'll see what happens. Arsenal, of course, we've got some question marks over some players ourselves. Um, Martinelli, will he be back? Gabriel, is he going to be available? Um, and then Bakayo Saka, um, is he going to be available? So some question marks for Arsenal as well, but I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. And that's for another video. So listen, that is it for today's DT's Daily. As usual, let me know in the comment section what you think about today's topics. If you're new around here, hit the subscribe button, smash a like on this video, and I will see you lot soon. I'm out of here.